Yes, it's mailbag time again. No, it's not mailbag Monday. It's actually, uh, what is it, Thursday today. Oh, the week's getting away. Here we go, my overflowing mailbag shelf. Ta-da! I'll just pick a few at random. Let's go. Start with the little ones. Woohoo! Using my new camera rig. Look at that. I can slide it across and then pan down. Fantastic. All right. Postcard. And we have Glacier National Park. Oh, isn't that fantastic? Beautiful. Look at the sunset. Look at that sort of rainbow effect over the mountains there. Oh, absolutely stunning. Got the afternoon sun reflecting off the mountains. Ah, makes me want to be up there. Anyway, this one is from my mate Steve Liebson, who you've um, seen before and you've heard uh, from on the Amp Hour as well. He was a uh, special guest on the Amp Hour. I'll have to link in the episode down below if you haven't listened to it. He uh, works at Xilinx these days. So, good day, Steve. I'm on vacation at Glacier National Park together with Canada's uh, Watered, Watered and Lakes National Park. It's UNESCO World Heritage Site and is international and is an international peace park. Thought you'd like this card? Then be sure to ride the red bus if you get here. I will. Indeed, it takes us uh, 15 hours just to get to bloody LA, then another, what, four or five to, to fly, well, maybe not that much, but like uh, four hours or three, four hours to fly up to uh, Vancouver. So, ah, oh, I'm envious. Thanks a lot, Steve. Hang on, I actually uh, confuse that with actually being in Canada. It is actually, of course, a uh, United States National Park. It's um, in Montana. It's uh, right on the border there, just as he says, um, uh, in conjunction with uh, Canada's Wharton and uh, National Park, right on the border south of Calgary there. Haven't quite been there. Been through Calgary, north of there. Beautiful country. And that on the front is Lake Sherbourne, located in the northeast section of the park. Ah, oh, sticky geranium, all dancing in the breeze, complemented by a rainbow from a passing summer shower. Ah, oh, I'm stuck in a windowless lab. Great. Next up is Anonymous, and uh, it's Australian, of course. There's old uh, Fred Hollows there, and no name on this whatsoever. So let's crack it open. Come on. Here we go. Need a better letter opener than my knife. Ooh, what have I got? Hey, whoa. We've got a little um, jigsaw uh, sort of uh, temple -y thing. I don't know. Which country are we talking about? Russia. Woohoo. Hi, Dave. I'm Veron Veronica. I think that's how you pronounce it. Anyway, Russian, uh, I won't even pronounce it, sorry. And my husband, Azhia Azha, um, he's from Iraq, Bashir region. Big fan of your blog. He tortures me every morning with your video. So I decided to send you a part of Russia because the uh, cards reading part is my favorite. Excellent. <laughs> On this card, you can see Soshi's... Volkonsky Dolmen, and there is a puzzle in Moscow. Have fun and best of luck. I guess I have to disassemble the puzzle and reassemble it. The main Russian cathedral. There you go. Thank you very much, Azha and Veronica. So let's have a look at Sochi's Volkonsky Dolmen. Woohoo! Oh boy, that's interesting. It's in Russian down there, but there you go. Sochi.ru. It's got its own website. I guess it's a, what is it, a seat or with something with a hole or a cavern or something in there um, embedded in a rock. I don't know. I'm going to have to Google that. Oh, it's actually um, the Olympic Games 2014 Sochi. It's got nothing to do with this actual rock. <coughs> Googled the website and all I got was sport and stuff. And of course I found a wiki uh, page for them. They're actually monoliths dating from the 4th millennium BC to the second millennium BC. Incredibly old and uh, large and precisely cut monoliths. Fantastic. Who knew? I love that sort of stuff. Next up, one from Lloyd Lewis from Phoenix, Arizona. Brilliant. We've got ourselves a photo mailer. So let's uh, pull. School for the gifted there. And we have a letter and... Oh, oh, what's the collective term for postcards? A buttload? I don't know, but look at that. Oh, beautiful Arizona. 
Love Arizona. Fantastic. What's that? Phoenix. I've been to oh, beautiful Grand Canyon. I've been there. I've only been to the south rim. I haven't been to the uh, north rim, unfortunately. I've been to some smaller uh, parts of it as well. Chiricata. Uh, uh, Chua National Monument, I won't even try to pronounce that, I suck. We've got a collection of cacti, more Arizona goodness, fantastic, and a map of Arizona. Let's see where I've been. So yeah, I think I've been to most of the northern part of this little map here. I've been to Who the Dam, so I've clearly been down 93 and across 40. I've been to the uh, south rim of the Grand Canyon, which is, looks like it's up there. I've been to Flagstaff, I've uh, stayed at... Uh, Flagstaff, I think uh, Meteor Crater's out here somewhere. I went to Meteor uh, Crater just uh, before Winslow, um, Arizona. And uh, I've been to the Navajo Indian Reservations. I've been to Monument Valley. It's awesome. I've been to Page. So I've done a good lot of that northern part there. Hi Dave, I'd like to thank you for all the hard work you put together for the videos for the EEV log. No worries, I'm a beginner. So much of what you discuss is way over my head, but I learn a little something every time I watch one of my videos. Awesome, that's all I want. I especially want to thank you for the soldering tutorials. They've been very beneficial to me and my soldering schools have improved significantly awesome. Anyway, I know Mailbag Monday, you really enjoy getting postcards, so I decided to pick up a few. Fantastic. Thanks Lloyd. Next up is... Electronic components worth a whopping 10 bucks from Jim Paris in Boston, Massachusetts. Another place I haven't bloody well been. Boston, ah, oh, here I am in my windowless lab here and ah, oh, everyone's sending me stuff from places I want to be. Ah, oh, goodness sake. Anyway, we have, oh, there's no note inside, that's it. Oh, it's a tiny little board. What do we got? No note, there's definitely, no, there's no note in there at all. So all we've got is a little board. Jeez, gonna have to get the macro lens. Looks like we have a little FTDI um, serial interface chip with a micro B connector. Yep, there we go. Jim.shftx. There you go, tiny little uh, serial interface board. Excellent, thank you very much, Jim. Yeah, it just uses a um, FT230. Uh, chip on there and it's just a configurable um, breakout board for that FT230X uh, so very neat very compact there's nothing to it of course and there's heaps of info actually on uh, Jim's website which is uh, jim.sh it's a very basic website but if you go to FTX then there's a whole bunch of info on here of how to uh, get the board and how to drive it and uh, what you can do with it standard 0.1 inch headers around the outside Fantastic, so that you can actually uh, plug it into a, um, a uh, well, you can plug it into a breadboard. I mean, these ones here would uh, short out on the one um, bit, or those would uh, short out, but you could put it on a Vero board or something that like that, or you only uh, populate the ones that you actually need. Neat. And we have one from the old Dart. Uh, someone who wants to remain anonymous, I guess, could be a message. There it is. Her Majesties, and we've got two mobile phones. I'm guessing old mobile phones, so let's have a look. We just tore down an old mobile phone. Ah, oh, not that old. Here we go, we've got a letter. What have we got? Nokia, some old Nokias, two old Nokias. Look at those. I'm not familiar with those uh, models off the bat, but oh, oh, it's a slider. There we go. And it's from Dick Thomas in Bradford in England. I don't think I've been to Bradford. Have been to England, but not Bradford. I was uh, clearing my junk box, came across these phones from different generations, quite modern. I thought they might make an interesting teardown side by side. One is a 2G, and uh, the N80 is a 3G. Well, I'm not an electronics geek, I'm a Linux geek, but love your show as it allows me to learn something new I have little knowledge about. I start watching a Kindle 3D teardown. Ah, and have been hooked since by Consumer Teardown. Awesome. Thanks, Dick, from Dick's Installs. .co.uk. I'll call you Tricky Dick. Well, I don't think you see that uh, format uh, much anymore in terms of like that squat, sort of really thick sort of form factor. They're all long and like thin and, you know, absolutely, uh, you know, tiny thin, but 
massive screens like this. You don't get like short little compact stubby ones like that anymore. Now one is the Model 7610 made in Finland. Awesome, hi to all my Finnish viewers. Next up, Mark Nias from Greater Manchester in the UK. Another one from the old Dart. Thank you very much. He's wrapped this one up good and proper. It's really uh, quite light, so let me slice this one open. Small packet rate. Guess it costs more, of course, the bigger it gets. We have a letter. We have bubble wrap. Ah, yeah, I know. Get a better knife. This is just my everyday carry. Ah, there we go. Hi, Dave. I'd like to congratulate you. Such a great video blog and forums. I've been watching your videos and forums ever since the Rigol 1052 uh, overclocking debacle. Yeah, that was a while ago. Now I own 1102 as a result. I'm sure in a previous mailbag you mentioned you like postcards, so you'll find one of my nearest big science. Oh, the um. Lovell Radio Telescope, ah, oh, Macclesfield, fantastic, also in the box you'll find my old Geiger counter, sourced from somewhere in Russia via eBay many years ago, I think it originally dates from the 80s, 90s, had a guest following the Chernobyl disaster, it's very basic and not very sensitive but does work with a clicker and light indication, awesome, I built a mighty ohm Geiger counter kit recently which is far better so I bought the, thought the old DSRB88 might make an interesting teardown. Has for some interesting construction components inside. Seems also the batteries last forever has been dipped in wax. So you need to warm it up to clean. Thank you very much, Mark. And there's a lovely postcard, the observatory. Isn't that beautiful? And that's a 76 meter dish for those playing along at home. There we go. Look at that. That's sort of uh, not what I was expecting. It runs off a single uh, AA battery there, which is rather neat. Hey, actually like it it's rather uh, compact and uh, all it's got is a buzzer on top and a light i don't even know if it's an led is it a, like a light bulb i don't know and uh, some switch i don't know whether that's off or on no idea but um i did see it uh give me one little beep but i don't have anything radioactive i don't even have a uh, smoke alarm really in here i don't think oh no, hang on. No, there is one up on the roof. No, put up the smoke alarm and I get a zip. So I'm not even sure if that's one of the uh, radioactive type uh, smoke alarms. I'm assuming it is, but um, it's obviously either um, faulty or it's um, just not sensitive enough to detect that. So there you go. That will go on the uh, teardown bench. Thank you very much, Mark. Oh, bugger it. What the heck? There's only a single screw. Let's crack it open. Turns out that's not actually a uh, light. That's the main tube down there, and uh, if anyone knows the particular uh, part number used in this thing, or has got a uh, data sheet for that puppy, please let us know, and yeah, look at the wax covering all the, all the circuitry down in there. Oh, man. So there's clearly um, not much to it. Just a power supply, and that's uh, pretty much it. And I was able to find a uh, review of you on YouTube of this thing. Apparently there is a... Uh, Lamp in there, it does flicker, that is on, down, off, and up is uh, off, and apparently, yes, it doesn't detect any uh, background radiation, not nearly sensitive enough, and it is quite difficult to actually get a radiation source to make this thing um, click and uh, flicker at all. Oh, but if you have any ideas for a decent radiation source I could test it with, let me know. Next up, we have Russ Miller from Portland, Oregon. G'day, Russ. And, uh, no, it's worn off there. Maybe I've had it for too darn long sitting on the mailbag shelf. So I have no idea what's inside this thing. It could actually take... It's quite large. It's um, a couple of baggies. Oh, God, there's everything in here. Check this out. A whole bunch of stuff. Russ, this is not my address. Fulger. Hey Dave, I found your videos and blog. It is helpful. Helped to rekindle my passion for electronics. Awesome. So I thought I'd send you these tokens of my appreciation. Enclosed us some souvenirs from my current home state of Oregon. Another place I haven't been to. Thanks for the reminder. X, everyone's plugging their state today. Since we're at sticklers for pronunciation here, the river is pronounced will am eat. Not will im eat. It et. Uh, God. Ah, just getting that one out of the way. You might have heard that Mount St. Helens in Washington, visible from Portland, erupted 23 years ago and closed in some ash from that eruption. 
wow, awesome. Is that, that is very cool. You bet your ash it's cool. Also enclosed are some pictures of origins since you seem to like nature. I do, I love when you, I think you'll like them and feel free to add this to your stop on your next visit to the US. I will. I'm sure you'll love it. Since you love Kenyon, I'm sure you love hiking up the Larch Mountain Trail in the Columbia River Gorge. I've heard of the Columbia River Gorge. I have also enclosed a couple of old cameras. Ah, not for turning on, though, for taking apart. I think they still work. One of them somehow got the camera compartment door broken off. So it's probably useless without duct tape. Enjoy. Thank you very much, Russell. Oh, he's um, Dusklow on the forums. Awesome. Thanks, Russ. Yeah, I've got a jazzy-looking uh, block puzzly thing which I kind of sort of broke a little bit here and it allows you to fold stuff over like that and get different scenes of presumably um, Portland there you go Portland Oregon fantastic oh oh look at that jeez there's so many different things there terrific and I bet people didn't know Portland Oregon is the city of roses. There you go. I did not know that. But then again, I haven't been there and don't live there. But here is a little, um, what is this? A brochure, a blurb, one of these uh, uh, touristy uh, things. Portland Bridges. They're quite proud of their bridges. There. Vista Bridge. Awesome. Washington Park. Ah. Oh. Portland Entertainment, Oregon Convention Center. It's all happening in Oregon. Mount Hood. Fantastic. Multnomah Falls. Oh, look at that. That is spectacular. Snow. What's that white stuff? I don't know about that in Australia. Ah, Oregon Coast. Beautiful. Vista House, the Columbia River Gorge. Fantastic. Oh, isn't that pretty? Love the old Don Deere, John Deere tractor. Fantastic. That's the uh, Willamette Valley. That's the one I'm going to get wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Mount Hood. Fantastic. They've got the long exposure there, so they're getting the water rippling down through there. Fantastic. Ah, oh, that doesn't look very high at all. Nothing. Wallawa Valley. Beautiful. Look at that. I love the sun reflecting off the, off the, uh, uh, that'd be like, it's not rock. Walls, they're probably like, a, it's almost like mud or something, erosion, er, eroded away. Crater, a crater, Lake National Park. Oh, spectacular. Man, I'm stuck in the bloody lab. I don't even have a freaking window here. Temple Line Lodge. Oh, Eastern Oregon. There we go. That's some barren country. Central Oregon. I want to go to Oregon. Silver Falls State Park. Oh, <sighs> Check it out, that is way too cool. Actual ash from Mount St. Helens. From presumably five miles away, 22 miles away, and 250 miles away. You can actually see it getting finer and finer there as, as it goes out. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Russ. That's just awesome. Wow, look at these ancient digital cameras. So crusty. It is powered from a couple of triple A's there. What is that? Like, a, you know, 640 by 480 or something. Oh my goodness. And this one is 1.3 megapixel Vivitar camera. Pair of double A batteries there. Um, SD card, standard SD card for its day. It's got a little LCD on top. It's actually, you know, it probably did the business back in the day. It's got a tripod port it's got a usb port and uh it's got a macro mode and ah it's all happening at a massive 1.3 megapixels Woohoo! next up we have a t-shirt and a necklace pendant haven't we looked at one of those before hmm anyway it's from liz uh bot with a silent k i guess from uh, grand rapids uh am i michigan i think it's grand rapids michigan could be wrong but hey, what have we got from the Geek Group? A real quarter crushed with a thunderbolt. Crushed with a thunderbolt? Okay. Project Stomper. Every shrunken quarter helps uh, secure the future the largest membership based laboratory uh, and hackerspace in America. There you go. For information on how you can help and be part of our dreams, please visit the Greek the Geek Group. Sorry. Dot org. Oh, I think I know what these are. They um, 
they 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 shrink them with a big um, electromechanical, um, uh, you know, a big induction current thing. Yeah, Project Stop, a high energy electrical impulse generator. There we go. Built in Grand Rapids, Michigan, by the Greek, by the Geek Group. Greek. I keep saying Greek. Um, Stomper discharges its high energy capacitor bank into a coil of wire wrapped around a quarter, which causes a rapidly changing magnetic field, which in turn causes the quarter to be reshaped. Once triggered, the entire process lasts 40 microseconds. Fantastic. I have no idea how big a regular... Uh, well, uh, there we go. That's a regular and that's a shrunken. There you go. Fantastic. The capacitor bank holds a charge of 6,000 volts DC when discharged to full voltage at a rate of over 100,000 amps flows into the work coil, in inducing a current of about a million amps into the quarter. Oh, brilliant. This causes the work coil around the quarter to create a cascading magnetic field within the coil, although electromagnetic induction and ele electrical current is induced within the quarter. This causes opposing magnetic fields between the work coil and the quarter, resulting in a shrunken quarter. There you go. Dot, uh, slash thegeekgroup.org slash stomper. I'm sure they got some video of that. Let me check. And there you go. One shrunken head quarter dollar. Love it. And there you go. It's uh, actually from uh, Mark McGow, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, from um, Armadale in uh, Western Australia instead of uh, Michigan. And uh, I heard you like some shirts, so I ordered a shirt from The Geek Group. Hacker Maker Space I've been involved with for the last few years, although they're located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've been volunteering my spare time working remotely from Western Australia doing systems development, hope, helping to improve their live broadcast system and building operations and control center. Oh, system, awesome. Some of the cool things have been up to. Project Stomper, 600 megawatt. Oh, electromagnetic coin crusher, Project Gemini, 200 uh, kilowatt Tesla coil, 12 ton polyphonic musical Tesla coil, and uh, Project Jeff, our KR350 Mark I industrial robot, which will go into program to flip pancakes just for shits and giggles, as you do. Anyway, um, yes, they do have a YouTube channel. Um, there's been talk about them on the uh, forum. They do uh, live shows and teardowns and stuff like that, so check out the Geek Group. Thank you very much. Mark, black's my colour too. Love it. Nice looking polo shirt, pretty funky. Got the symbol on here. Beauty. And I might call it uh, quits after this one. This will be the uh, last one for today's mailbag. Not sure how long we've been going for, but I'm sure it's uh, long enough. Oh, I'm getting five minute battery warning. Jeez. Anyway, um, this one will actually uh, take a while. So I know it's in here. I won't uh, have time to play around with it, but it will require. Oops. A um, video or videos in its own right because it is a Terrasic. There we go. Ta da! D E O Nano FPGA board. Oh, it's tiny. Yes, it is absolute tiny. It's a um, Cyclone uh, 4. FPGA board. I, from memory, it's about 80 bucks or something like that. It's not um, that expensive. They've got a whole range. I'll show you the uh, card in a minute. But uh, nice headers. It's got a nice um, uh, laser cut um, acrylic top on it. Um, standard 0.1 inch header interface and uh, all sorts of other stuff. And uh, Terrasica, one of the major uh, players in the FPGA demo board feel so these guys really know what they're doing and uh, this one I've heard really really good things about so I hope to be able to use this um, to do some FPGA uh, demo videos and they've got a whole range of boards here's the DEO uh, Nano we've got um, uh, Cyclone uh, 4 of course they've got Cyclone 3, Cyclone 2's um, 22,000 uh, logic elements equivalent 32 meg of SD RAM doesn't have like a lot of the uh, fancy stuff that some of the others have like VGA output and SD card and codec but for just uh, basic general purpose I.O. it's good enough it's got a USB uh, blaster built in the Altera uh, USB pl blaster so it works directly with the tools you don't have to buy the uh, separate programmer and um, you know it's got eight LEDs and some toggle switches and blah 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 and uh, demo source code is all included in there and extra features it does have an eight channel ADC and a three axis accelerometer on there somewhere 
So yeah, this is um, a really low cost introduction to um, FPGA. So yeah, it's going to take uh, quite some time, of course, to uh, do the software. I mean, we've got software from Altera. You get the whole thing so you don't have to download it because it's absolutely massive. So you get the Quartus 2 uh, web edition. You get all the IP libraries and uh, all sorts of stuff on the disc. And uh, plus you get uh, the demos. So I'm sure they work really well. I do actually want to spend some time to do some videos on FPGAs because I haven't um, covered them much on the blog before. So yeah, there we go. It's got uh, two push buttons, headers, blah, 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 AD converter. There we go. It's got a 50 megahertz oscillator on there. Everything you need to get a basic um, IO-based um, FPGA up and running with some uh, built-in memory. So, you know, it's even got the uh, Altera compatible uh, Byte Blast Blaster programmer built in. Fantastic. And there you go, National Semiconductor are uh, quite proud that they've uh, teamed up with this and they're um, showing you, extolling the virtues of their linear regulators that they've um, no doubt got on board there. There you go, and their 12-bit uh, ADC, which they've no doubt got on there as well. Neat. And that sucker is uh, 79 US dollars, so very cheap indeed. You can also get it, uh, it's a bit more expensive, but you can get it from um, Artifruit as well so that is you know for a sub hundred dollar fpga uh, demo board um and but of course you know it's all about the uh, uh demo software and everything that comes with it how well it works as a package solution but that'll take me quite a few hours to uh have a play with that no doubt but um big thumbs up let me know if you want to see some fpga videos based on this little puppy so i'm quite excited to uh have this. I wasn't. I was going to drive some uh, VGA uh, displays and uh, stuff with this uh, little puppy. So even though this doesn't have the VGA um, output on it, some of the other boards do. Of course, you can just um, uh, output them straight from the digital um, uh, IOs there um, via some resistors, and that's uh, pretty much it. And you can drive multiple uh, uh, displays off the one um, FPGA because you can install multiple VGA cores, and that's kind of uh, one of the demo projects I uh, had in mind to do. So if you do want to see some FPGA videos based on that, please let me know.